This man is Bernd Ludens, a resident of East Berlin. His right to free passage into West Berlin is guaranteed by international agreement. But on August 13, 1961, this right has been set aside. To cross into West Berlin, Ludens swims the canal that at one point divides the zones. On reaching the western bank, he takes his first few steps into freedom and is promptly shot down by rifle fire from a border guard on the communist side. To know why Bernd Ludens was shot down across an artificial border by a man who bore him no personal malice, we must look at the road. We must go back along it many miles and many years. Back from Berlin, 1961. To Havana, 1959. To Budapest, 1956. Koyakon, 1940. Kronstadt, 1921. St. Petersburg, 1905. Sunday, January 22nd. Under the Tsar, Nicholas II, Russia is ruled by a government of absolute powers. These people, the workers and peasants of St. Petersburg, are not here to protest against this autocracy, but to appeal to the autocrat. Under the leadership of a priest, Father Georgi Gepon, they have come to present a petition to the Tsar. We, the working men and the inhabitants of St. Petersburg, come to the Tsar to seek defense. We have become beggars, we wait. One quarter of a million people stand before the Winter Palace. But the Tsar, in fact, is not there. Nor is it his will that the petition be received. Instead, said the Tsar, Nicholas II, My autocracy will remain unchanged. Said Father Gepon, We no longer have a Tsar. Long live the fight for freedom. The bearded young man who amends Father Gepon's words is V.I. Ulanov. Party name, Lenin. Long live the revolutionary proletariat. The Tsar will never be a success as a ruthless autocrat. He doesn't even look the part, and he's busy. Busy with elaborate ceremonials that no longer interest hungry people. Busy with his family, including his son, a hemophiliac who nears death whenever he cuts himself and is kept alive, according to his mother, by the occult powers of Gregory Rasputin. Rasputin is a holy man. He says so himself. 